Hi, my name is Sarah Griffith. I work at Westlake Pro in Los Angeles, California. This video is part three of our Avid Pro Tools Matrix video series, where I'm providing an in-depth overview of the functionality of this new converter and providing tutorials covering a variety of functionalities and situations. In this video, I will be expanding upon video number two, where I explain the different types of analog, AES, and HDSDI connectivity options that are available. I will continue explaining the remaining connectivity options in this video, Dante, MADI, and Pro Tools I.O. The Dante card option is an Audinate Brooklyn 2 module that is installed internally in the unit. At this moment, there is only the option to install one Dante card per unit. The Dante card can supply up to 64 channels of audio over IP. In order to utilize the functionality of this card, you need to install Audinate's Dante controller to recognize and route to other Dante-enabled devices, and install Audinate's Dante virtual sound card. Both of these are available for direct download from Audinate.com. We also have included this link in the video description for your convenience. The Dante card, once installed, interfaces with two Ethernet connections on the back of the matrix using an internal Ethernet switch on the basic digital I.O. and processing card. The switch operates as a bridge between the two RJ45 connectors on the rear panels and the internal controller, as well as the Dante Brooklyn 2 module. In normal operation, both connections can be used for connecting to an Ethernet network, as well as acting as a switch to expand the connection to other matrices on the network. There are two ways to configure the two network ports. The default setting is switched, which means both connections 1 and 2 can be used for connecting to Ethernet for GUI control, and as a switch to daisy chain to other matrices, and connect to your Dante network to communicate with other Dante-enabled devices. If you change the default setting to redundant, the two ports have redundant IP audio streams. And in this case, you must use port 1 as your control port for your network for the GUI. This is only recommended if you need redundant audio streams, for example, in a live performance recording situation. There are two different types of MADI expansion options for the matrix, which both function similarly. They are both chassis cards that can house up to two MADI SFPs, small form factor pluggable, of your choice, either optical or coaxial MADI. Neither option comes with SFPs, which are ordered and installed separately. So, what's the difference? If you only need up to three MADI streams total, or up to 192 channels of MADI I.O., you would install a daughter card this piece mounts directly on the motherboard and is accessible via the optical I.O. chassis slot above the HDX ports. This chassis expansion supports up to two MADI SFP modules, either optical or coax, or a combination of the two, which brings your total MADI stream count to three, 192 channels of I.O., including the MADI that comes in stock with the matrix. The matrix can support up to 19 independent MADI streams for a total of 1,216 channels of MADI I.O. To have access to more than three independent MADI streams, in addition to the daughter card I just mentioned, you can install a card slot version. It also is a chassis that can house up to two optical or coax SFPs, but it's designed to slide into one of the eight available card slots in the rear of the matrix. So, for a full 19 streams, stream one would come from the coax MADI pre-installed in the matrix. Streams two and three would come from the daughter card installed above the HDX ports with two SFPs installed. Streams 4 to 19 would come from MADI cards in slots 1 through 8, with two SFPs loaded into each. There are three different optical SFP modules available, and one coax SFP module to plug into either the daughter card or the card slot version of the MADI card. Optical SFP number 1 is an optical MADI SFP transceiver with multi-mode fiber with a low output LED signal that travels at a rate of 850 nanometers. This one has an LC style connection. Optical SFP number two is an optical MADI SFP with a multi-mode fiber with a low output LED signal, but this one travels at 1300 nanometers, which is standard for AVID devices like the HD MADI I.O. This one also has LC style connections. Optical SFP number three is the third type of optical MADI transceiver available. It uses single multi-mode fiber with a laser signal at 1300 nanometers. It also utilizes LC style connections. And finally, there is one coaxial SFP that is compatible that uses high-density mini HDBNC connections. The only connectivity I've not touched upon yet are the DigiLink ports. The two DigiLink ports on the back of the matrix interface with the HDX cards of your computer. They are labeled primary and expansion and support up to 32 channels of I.O. per port. This means you can effectively use the matrix as a Pro Tools HD interface. In the GUI, you can specify whether you would like the matrix to emulate an HDIO, 
meaning it will show up in Pro Tools as four 16-channel HD interfaces, or an HD MATI interface, meaning it will show up as two 32-channel interfaces. If you have Pro Tools 12.7, there are also two new port emulation modes that will show up as Matrix 16 and Matrix 32, respectively. You can also modify the port configuration in the GUI, where both ports can be configured as two primary ports so that you can have all 64 channels of I.O. connected to one computer, or you can configure them as primary and one expansion port to be able to connect to multiple computers. However, if you do connect to two computers, please note that you can only control the matrix from one of them. This concludes part three of our Avid Matrix video series. To learn more about this product, please check out our YouTube channel to see all other videos in the series. We've provided a link in this video description for your convenience.